Welcome to Heroes for Sale, Purple Revolver's new show which delves into the world of comic books, movies and action figures. Coming up, we have interviews with Red Dwarf star Robert Llewellyn and Axe Cop artist Ethan Nicole. We will be showing you how to create your own custom Deadpool and take you through our top toys of 2013. But now, Dave Johnson gives us his thoughts on the new wave of the Star Wars Black Series figures. I'm here for the Heroes for Sale figure review for Bay TV. Today we're going to be looking at the Star Wars Black Series Wave 2. The first figure we're going to look at, everybody's favourite anti-hero, Han Solo. Hasbro have gone out and said that the likenesses on these are not supposed to look like the actors, so this is a great likeness of Han Solo. Han has similar articulation to the Marvel Legends line, also by Hasbro. His hair sort of restricts him from looking up too far. So that was Han Solo, and now we're moving on to Greedo. I was surprised to see that the hair and the ears and even his fingers are a little bit rubbery. But that's not a bad thing, it's easy to hold his gun. There's very, very little range of motion on this. Greedo's eyes are really nicely done. Very insect look on them, very glossy and metallic at the same time. With Greedo dead and buried, we're going to move on to Slave Layer. The sculpt's fantastic and this does look like Carrie Fisher, despite Hasbro saying they don't look like the actors. And you've got a lot of little intricate details such as the ribbon on the, the bra, um, the details on the, the part of the loin cloth. The ankles aren't quite as articulated as the others. It's designed so it is, but because of the sculpt of the way her boots are, you barely move. You will be happy to know she does gyrate with the ab crunch. Next up, is the most anticipated figure in the whole line but we're just thankful to finally have Boba Fett. The paint works fantastic on Boba Fett. You've got all the little intricate details such as the yellow painting of the markings on his helmet, his emblems on his shoulder pads and on his chest. His clothes look dirty similar to Greedo, they've done a nice paint wash on there and then my favourite little detail is all the odd bits of battle damage to show that he really is a battle-worn warrior as we know him. Straight from the box, Boba includes his jetpack fitted to the hole on his back with a peg socket, blaster rifle, which is a bit of a nightmare to get him to hold, but he also comes with a smaller blaster as well. Obviously he's got this material piece of cloth which holds behind him, but this is really nice. It's a nice touch to what really is the best figure in the Black Series so far and my pick for number one figure of 2013. Thanks Dave. This year's Thought Bubble Comic Con was bigger than ever. We caught up with Crichton actor Robert Llewellyn. What do you think of Thought Bubble? Do you read comics? Uh, you ever thought about writing a graphic novel? Tell us about your book and what else is up, Hadron Head. Okay, sounds good for suits. Say smeg, you smegger. Thanks for 
talking to us, nipple nuts? We'll return to Thought Bubble shortly, but now, here's came with our first Pimp My Figure feature. Hi, it's Kane with Heroes for Sale. I'm going to teach you how to turn your Deadpool into a custom. You're going to need uh, some paints, so any acrylic paints are good. Uh, paint brushes, um, Zacto knives, very good to get little bits off, and a drill. For this figure, I've decided to use uh, bits of fodder. Um, I've used the Aoma Sword Chief uh, X Men Classics uh, Gambit jacket and a Jonah Hex um, rifle and the cowboy hat. Right, so I've got this revolver and I've got this holster off Deadpool. What I'm going to have to do is dremel a hole in the bottom there so the revolver will fit. Right, now we're going to remove the harness from the belt and we're going to just have to round this back off here. It should be ready for paint towards the end. Okay, so now the belt and the holster for the gun is done. We can put them to one side. I'm going to work on the arms of the figure, which I'm going to have to sand to help the paint stick to it better. Main points are the hinges, just to get a layer of paint off, so when we put another layer on, that it doesn't rub. Okay, so we've just finished sanding down the jacket to give it a, a better chance of holding the paint to it when we come to dry brushing it. Now, dry brushing. All you have to do really is get paint on your brush, get some kitchen roll or an old shirt um, and just take as much of the paint off as possible. I want to move on to the arms to, um, to make it match the colour of the jacket a lot more. Okay so I just finished off dry brushing around the boots and in just a few random areas just to make it look a bit more dusty. You can just keep doing this as much as you want, just make sure you haven't got that much paint on your brush. Okay so now we've finished dry brushing just to give it more definition. Um, if you can see on the bottom I've um, mixed uh, black and white just to give it a, a bit of a dusty look to the uh, trim of the jacket. So next, just going to put them together, see how it looks. Deadpool, Liverpool, Deadpool, Liverpool. The bishop, donkey punch, the prostitute, and kept the cash. What, we're on? I don't believe you. <coughs> Hello, I'm Duke Thompson, and we interrupt this broadcast to bring you this news flash. Someone famous has died. We're not sure who it is yet, but the world of entertainment is in mourning for their fallen comrade who we think died peacefully in their sleep. But we're yet to have that confirmed, and who it is, we don't yet know. Tonight's scheduled programme of TJ Hooker will be postponed, unless, of course, it was TJ Hooker who died. Now, in terms of this year's box office results in spandex, Marvel beat DC hands down. Here's some films we can all look forward to in the new year. Captain America The Winter Soldier, released in March, will see good old Cap Give us 80s kids some nostalgia kicks by taking on the Ruskies. Remember when the Russians were the bad guys? Those were the days. Well, all right. That's all for now. Remember, kids, heroes for sale, ounce in the mail. Uh. Okay. We sent our comic culture vultures into Manchester to report on their scene. And this is what they found. Uh -huh. 
Ê, em mua mùi cũng trang. Đi rồi trang. Elia from here is Cecilia. We've just been on an action figure hunt around Manchester today. Not much in the way of action figures, I'm afraid. So um, we had a look around the comic shops as well, because obviously I'm into my comics as well as the action figure crack. But uh, went into Travelling Man today, and I spoke to Haroon then. I think uh, the, the cool thing about Manchester, Manchester obviously is quite a central big city, so people from surrounding smaller towns and cities end up uh, coming to Manchester. And I think the great thing about it is, is within within you know 10 minutes radius, we've got like Piccadilly Records, Forbidden Planet, Fanboy Free, uh, we've got second-hand places like Empire Exchange, and I think all those things, because they're kind of in the close vicinity, it's, it is a small family and we all get, end up getting a bit shop proud or you know brand proud, and we all, we're all really happy with it. Wow. Now it's back to Thought Bubble to chat with the co-creator of Axe Cop. What do you think of the British comic book scene? So for people who aren't reading about dead old fellows, where did the idea for Axe Cop come from? Apart from psychotropic drugs, tell us what influenced X Cop. What's the writing process behind an X Cop story? Next for the character, man. Thanks for talking to us, dude. Finally, it's over to Rex who's casting a critical eye over the highlights of 2013 and picking out his top figures of the year. I'm Katie Neen. You're welcome. So here we are at Heroes for Sale, the store on Hanover Street, Gostin Shopping Arcade, with Rex and uh, Anne Pierce. We're just going to bring you up to speed on what we've been doing for the year 2013. It's been quite a good year, hasn't it, Rex? Yeah, it's been fantastic. It's been a really good year. We've obviously grown the business over the last eight months since we've been here, trying to work out logistics, trying to stay on the ground. This is what we've done, and literally just grown it from the bottom up. And this is where we are today, eight months down the line. It's good. It's a good bar. It's a good bar. It has had a good on the ground vibe, hasn't it? It has. We've got a lot of regulars, yeah. and we're getting more and more regular customers coming in now. I mean, I, I always think it's got to be the best action figure shop. Within a 50 mile radius, certainly in the northwest. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, just you just have to look at the likes of Toys R Us, places like that. When you go to the actual action figure aisle and you walk down there now, there's literally two aisles and don't have anything there. It's all the brand new stuff, the modern stuff. A lot of it's based for kids. It's not really geared towards the collectors. And we're solely based on trying to specialise in just action figures, as you can see. 
which is what we found when we did the Heroes for Sale pop-up shop on Bolt Street last year. I mean, it's been amazing. I've had a lot of people come in and yeah. to me going, do you remember that? I remember you when you're on Bolt Street. I mean, I'm always impressed every time I come in here that it just seems to grow and grow and grow stuff in all the time. But um, what we really need you to do now, please, Rex, is take us through your, your top action figures for 2013. Of course, yeah. Well, I prepared the top three. Um, so, yeah, I'll get to it. Sound. Over here, we've got our number three toy of the year. Masters of the Universe Classics, Ram Man by Mattel. This is a remake of the 1982 original, as you can see. We've got no spring loaded action feature on this guy, just a beautiful sculpt and a lot more beautiful articulation. That's the number three spot, Mattel's Ram Man. Couldn't have a top three this year without, without having at least one black series figure. Always been a fan of the Stormtrooper. So, he's by Hasbro, six inch black series. This is what I've picked as my number two figure of the year. Obviously this guy's a Sand Trooper, not a Stormtrooper. That's why he's got wear and the tear on him. Came with a few more accessories. I've just stripped him down just to make him look a little bit more like the Stormtrooper we're gonna get in wave three. And then, number one, here we go. Top figure of the year. Boom, here he is. Transformers Masterpiece by Takara. Hasbro have also released this guy. This is a remake of an older toy. The right team. figure. The right figure. Definitely the right figure. And the uh, reissue of the 1983 Soundwave. Beautiful figure again. Sculpt, articulation, all that patience of the paint. Perfect on this guy. Did a lot of nice accessories with him. And there he is. That's the laser beak. Absolutely beautiful transformation on the laser beak. They'll go in there. Absolutely beautiful figure, and that's what I've picked as my number one. As you can see, a bit of a common theme running through my top three figures. They're all remakes of vintage 80s toys. Seems like well, that's the best thing. That's, that's what we're getting now. And that's it. That's the heroes for sale. Top three figures of the year. The right figure. Thanks for watching, kids. That's it for 2013. Tune in next time, and remember, pull, pull the, the trigger, trigger on an action figure. Heroes for sale. Out to the mail!